UTPA women's basketball made history last week. We'll show you what they did and how they did it. Get to know UTPA baseball legend and Hall of Famer Lupe Cano and see just how deep his family's connection to UTPA still runs. And you've seen them at Bronx games of every sport. We get to know a pair of UTPA superfans, the Von Indies. This is Bronx Country. Welcome to Brown Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. Entering the season, only five teams in the history of NCAA Division I women's basketball had ever come back from a 25-point deficit. It hadn't happened in five years. Interestingly enough, two of the previous times involved games featuring two Texas teams, and both times it was a team from the Southland Conference on the losing end. Well, what do we have here? A game featuring two Texas teams. The Bronx of the WAC and Houston Baptist of, you guessed it, the Southland Conference. We pick it up late first half. The Bronx are down 25, and Tonisha Walker breaks a 24-0 Huskies run to bring the Bronx within 40-17. After an Anna Strickland layup puts the Bronx down 25 again, Brittany Bush at the line, hits two free throws, Bronx within 23. Then, with about a minute left in the half, Jasmine Thompson buries the three. Bronx within 20 at the half. Early second half, Bronx now down 19. Walker hits a jumper, so it's a 17-point game. Next time down the court, Shante Ga for three. Bronx within 14. The Huskies push their lead back out to 18, but Thompson makes it a 16-point game. And then Raquel Preston makes it a 15-point game. The Huskies' offense never really relented. They're up 17 now with about 13 minutes left. And it's Goff for three. Bronx within 14. After an Aaron McGarrigan layup, Kaylin Boyd starts to heat up. Knocks down the triple. Bronx within 13. Ensuing possession, we're back to Goff. It's an 11-point game. And then Taylor Cyphers makes it a 10-point game at 55-45. After a pair of Rachel Arthur free throws, Goff again brings the Bronx within 10. It had been down 20 at the half. And halfway through the second, they've cut that deficit in half. The Bronx got it into single digits for the first time with seven minutes left, as Boyd converts the old-fashioned three-point play to make it 64-55. And then Boyd goes for the new school three, not once, but twice. Bronx within six. Five minutes to go. How about a little more golf? Bronx within 67-65. A minute later, Bronx down four again, and Bush brings the Bronx within two again. Next time down the court, Thompson at the line. She hits them both, game tied at 69. Now we're at a minute to go. Bronx down 74-70. And after a pair of misses, Bush with the board and the bucket. Bronx within two. 35 seconds left, Walker at the line, goes two for two. We're tied at 74. Ensuing inbounds. Out of bounds, it's Bronx ball. The Bronx have a chance to take their first lead since early in the first half. And look at Thompson, the board and the bucket. Bronx leads 76-74. Last gasp for the Huskies, length of the court to go. No good. The Bronx pull off an improbable 76-74 victory. Well, I'll tell you, the comeback is uh, of epic proportion. <laughs> like I said, I, I think it's very similar to, uh, say, a certain team missing a field goal and another team running it back 109 yards at the end of the game. To come back from 25 yards is quite an accomplishment. And we went into halftime, we were 20 down, and uh, our kids made their mind up. There wasn't any yelling, there wasn't any screaming, no pouting. I mean, we realized we had not played good, and you had to give Houston Baptist credit they played extremely well, and Donna Finney's doing a good job with that program. But it just came back to us deciding that we wanted to play some uh, Bronx basketball, and we came back and we did, and what we accomplished was, a, was one, a win, which is very important, but two, it, it continues to grow our confidence in what we're trying to do with our team and with our program. So 
it would have to be on a scale of 1 to 10 of that comeback. I'd have to give it a 12. Epic, certainly an appropriate word for this game. A season high, five Bronx reached double figures in scoring to send the Bronx to the biggest comeback in program history. It was the third largest deficit overcome to win a game in NCAA history. Next up was a visit to Texas A&M Corpus Christi. The Islanders scored the first seven points of the game. Shante Goff, not liking that. Ferries the three, Bronx within four. A little later on, Bronx down 11-4. Tonisha Walker comes up with the basket to make it 11-6. Now watch Walker on defense. Wait for it. Wait for it. Do not take your eyes off of Tonisha Walker. Picks up the steal, goes straight to the hoop, gets fouled, hits both free throws, Bronx is in three. Now it's back to Goff on the fast break. Bronx pull within 12 to 10. Bronx down four a little later on. But here comes Kaylin Boyd. Hits the layup. Bronx within 15-13. And we move ahead. And if at first you don't succeed, make sure you get a rebound or two and find Raquel Preston. She gives the Bronx a 21-19 lead with that basket. The Bronx had a lead early in the second half. But the Islanders go on to win 68-54. Jasmine Thompson and Tanisha Walker led the Bronx with 10 points each. Thompson also led the Bronx in rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. Well, uh, we simply got outplayed, particularly in the second half, but from the get-go, we didn't have much energy, and uh, in particular, I had two or three starters that just flat didn't have a good game, but I got to do a better job coaching. I got to do a better job preparing them, preparing them to play. This is all on me, so we can just put it out, out there that this is mine, and I'll make sure this doesn't happen again. Here's a look at the WAC non-conference standings. The Bronx in a tight race for the top spot along with Grand Canyon and defending tournament champion Idaho. The Bronx get a few days off before visiting TCU on Sunday. The Bronx are back home on Wednesday, December 18th against UT Arlington. Yeah, TCU will be very tough. They're in the Big 12. They're playing with, on a mission and uh, they want to get to the upper echelon of the Big 12, so we'll have our hands full. After the TCU game, the Bronx are back home December 18th against UT Arlington. Need a ticket to the game? There are lots of ways to get them. You can go online to utpabronx.com and click on the online ticket center. You can also give the Bronx a call at the number on the screen. On to the men, Bronx hosting UTSA, looking for the season sweep. The game was tight early with some good defense. Jack Hines finds a jumper, ties the game up at two. And then after IG Thomas three, Justin Leathers hits a three of his own, game tied at five. The Roadrunners scored the next six points, but we're back to Hines. Bronx within 11-7. After a pair of free throws by Phillip Jones, here comes Josh Cleveland. That, as we say in the business, is called goaltending. Bronx within 13-9. The Roadrunners led by as many as 12, but that never stops the Bronx. Late in the half, Bronx down 10, and Shaq Hines hits the jumper. Shaq Boga nails the three, and then we go back to Hines for a Shaq attack. Bronx within 31-28 after a 7-0 run. On to the second half, where it becomes punch, counter punch. Javon Farrell with one of his three threes to get the Bronx within three. UTSA went back up by 11, but LJ McIntosh finds the downtown stroke and then performs an encore. Bronx within four. Then, with 3.19 to go, Farrell hits a pair of free throws to get the Bronx within 59-57. That's as close as they got. Roadrunners win 72-65. Farrell led the Bronx with 16 points. Strong night for Boga, adding seven assists to his 11 points. Hines with 10 points on five of eight shooting. Well, the plan was uh, our, our zone was supposed to be really good, but I guess we, we couldn't stop them getting to the hole because like the, the whole team are good drivers. Yeah. So the zone stopped them from driving, but I guess today we couldn't we couldn't get that down pat. They've got great drivers yeah. and they do a good job of getting angles and we tried to play both zones and, and, uh, and the man. The other reason we had to go to zone was the foul trouble. With, yeah. you know, we had I think it was a Latte had a couple early. Cleveland had three in the first half. Hines had three in the first half. So you're trying to protect them a little bit too. Mm -hmm. And I thought we really slowed them down when we went three two. Yeah. But then we we couldn't score enough points to to really get it going. Here's a look at the WAC non-conference standings. The Bronx one of three four win teams in the middle. The Bronx get a good week off before visiting TCU on Sunday, part of a two game trip as they'll visit SMU as well. 
we played two really good opponents. I mean, yeah. TCU and SMU are both loaded, yeah. uh, but uh, uh, SMU more than TCU, but they're still very, very good, and they're mm -hmm. road games. But, you know, if we can go pick one of those off, and then we get back kind of playing back into our clientele a little bit, you know, so get ready for the league seasons, what, what it's about. In the 1960s, Lupe Canole was a fixture on the UTPA baseball team. Today, his granddaughter is part of the UTPA track and field team. Next on Broad Country, we get to know the Canoles and explore their special connection to the green and white. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Last week we told you about the UTPA Hall of Fame and Hall of Honor induction class of 2014. And we got to know inductee Nancy Verustegui. She's not the only inductee currently living in the Rio Grande Valley. Baseball legend Lupe Canole lives in McAllen, and his granddaughter, Alyssa Canole, is a freshman on the UTPA track and field team. Elizabeth Espinoza has more. He was tough. He threw very hard. He just got people out. I don't know how I did it, but I did. Family, a degree, and a 52-year marriage are some of the accomplishments former baseball player Lupe Canole has in his books. Now he can add UTPA Hall of Famer to the list something Lupe didn't believe at first. He says, are you all running out of people, names, or what are you, what's going on? He said, no. He said, your name was brought up, and uh, we decided that you deserve it. I said, I was, uh, like I say, I was shocked. Continuing to carry on the canoe name at UTPA is Lupe's granddaughter, Alyssa, a fellow Bronc. This freshman thrower for the 2014 women's track and field team is happy to share the strong connection with her grandfather. So, I mean, to have my grandpa there to support me, not only, you know, just him in person, but he supports me. And when my mental game starts to go out, he's there to bring me back up. In the end, the days on the mound are some of Lupe's toughest but greatest memories with his former teammates. We, we went through some hard times. It was, uh, it was not easy. Even though we had a scholarship, we had to, we had to really work to, to, to get, uh, I guess this is a, the reward for, uh, for hard work. It always pays off. For Brown Country, I'm Elizabeth Espinosa. Alyssa Canola and the Bronx held their annual green and white meet on Friday. Meet kicked off with the discus. Jasmine Davison throwing for green sends hers 39.54 meters. But then Clarissa Gonzalez, throwing for white, throws it just a little bit farther, 39.87 meters to take the win. On to the men's side. Trey Taylor trying to give white a sweep of the discus, 42.13 meters, that's pretty good. But Jesus Alvarez, just a little better, 42.76 meters. On to the hammer throw, and the newcomers dominated. Look at Cristina Santiago Bravo. 47.26 meters. And on the men's side, watch Javier Cartero. He blew away the field with a throw of 54.68 meters, clean sweep of the event for White. Now let's take a look at the jumpers. Start with the long jump, where Leokawan Williams picks up some points for White with a jump of 5.28 meters, more than two tenths of a meter ahead of the competition. But Edmundo Mata responds for green, jumps 6.17 meters. Onto the high jump, 
We start with green, newcomer Kimberly Kiriata with a solid jump of 5-1. But Amy Avila goes the extra inch to take the event for white. Now to the track, 300 meter hurdles. Dijon Johnson edges a tight field coming in at 38.15 seconds to give white a win. We close with the 100 meter dash. Everyone finished within a second of each other, but Trevion Williams ekes out the win. Green wins the meet for the second year in a row. For a complete list of results, make sure to visit utcabronx.com. It was a great meet. Uh, it was a great opportunity for our fans and family and friends to get a chance to come out and watch. Uh, the team had a blast. You know, it was great competition between the green and white team. You know, they wanted updates on the point totals, and it was just a very exciting meet. We got to see some great competition, got to see some great marks, some great running, great throws, so it, it was a good meet for us. I'd say Javi uh, and the men's hammer had a great day. You know, got out there about 44, 54 meters, so close to 55, and uh, Christina also threw very well in the hammer, so it was quite impressed with the two of them. And Trey Taylor in the men's weight throw, I think he got out there about 17 meters, so that was very impressive. Uh, I'd say uh, Martin looked fantastic, you know, coming off a great cross-country season. Uh, he ran very strong. On the women's side, uh, I'd say freshman Elise Crowther threw, ran very well, as did Robin Gayoso. Um, so I'd say you know, it, was, it was pretty good. I think as always, there's, there's more work to be done. Um, still a little rusty, being it's the first competition some of them have had, and it was at home, so it was comfortable, it was a little lax, but you know, we definitely have to get their, their gears turned up uh, the next few weeks before we uh, compete indoors. You see them at just about every home game, and a handful of road games too. Coming up on Bronx Country, we get to know two of the Bronx biggest fans, the Von Indies. When you go to Bronx games using your whack packs, you're going to notice two fans with an arsenal of fun signs who are a fixture in the first row of Bronx games across all sports. Raquel Gonzalez has the story. Oh, my day starts off at 5.30 in the morning and walk for two miles with uh, four of my friends. Most days, the Von Endies find pleasure living a relaxed life. I walk uh, from three to four and a half miles depending on the day. Uh, then I come home and I uh, usually read the paper. The couple bounces between exercise, reading, and... I work on the computer a lot doing cards and photos and stuff like that. While this couple remains active retirees, it was not long ago that the Von Endies were actively working for the University of Texas Pan American. Well, we moved down here in 1968. Um, he told me that we were going to come down to Pan American for a year, maybe two, and uh, we're still here. Um, <laughs> I, <lied>. I, <laughs> I started working at the library at Pan Am, and I worked there for four years. I uh, was a faculty member and staff member uh, at the university even before it was a university. It started off when it was Pan American College. Uh, and then watched it uh, grow into Pan American University and eventually into the University of Texas Pan American. Over the past 45 years, both Von Endies have become a vital part of the UTPA community. They're good role models for all of us. Um, they, they show us the importance of showing up for the games and caring about the, the athletes, about Bronx spirit. <laughs> While the couple may have stepped away from life in the office, neither has left Bronx Pride behind. Well, we watch them on TV. Well, I've, we do, yeah. I've, I've watched the, the stat package on, on the, the computer. I just go to cheer. I don't, I don't understand all the plays and We're stuff like that. We're not enough. sophisticated about it or anything. We just go for the, for the students. Yeah, for the athletes. Um, it's so much fun to sit with them because they're so enthusiastic about the game. They know all the players. They know all the rules. Um, they really care about the athletes. They care about the students. And so it's, it's fun to sit next to them. Their love for Bronx sports developed after their own children went off to college. They're students and they're players, but, I mean, we, we feel like that, that their parents kind of feel like that we're here when they can't be here. And so we're rooting them on and, and talking to them and stuff when their parents can't be here. You know, I see them as my other grandparents away from home. And, you know, always hugging them after games always feels great. And 
you know, they're like family. Ted has these signs that he makes. Well, my favorite one is, is uh, Viva Las Fr uh, Bronx. Today, the most important paperwork Ted completes. I have a, a Los Bronx for the men and a Los Bronx for the women. Is work on his signs to cheer on the Bronx. I saw that we got the great big new scoreboard and I thought, well, we need to put some uh, slogans up there, some, some uh, things to help people uh, cheer for the team. The interesting thing is, the Von Endies don't claim to be sports fanatics, but rather Bronx fanatics. I don't think of us as, as great sports fans. I don't go out of my way to, to go to games uh, other places. It, we're, we're Bronx fans. <laughs> hey, you played well. Thank you. You did such a good job. Thank you. The Von Endies treasure the Bronx, and it is clear the Bronx athletes have become fans of the Von Endies. It means so much to know that we always have those two people here, no matter what, no matter what the outcome of the game is, to support us every home game. It feels good. For some reason, I always look in the stands to see if they will be there, and if I don't see them there, I'm like, okay, are they going to come? Maybe they'll come soon, or uh, something like that. It is obvious they have spectators of their own sending admiration and love back into the stands of the Bronx Fieldhouse. Who have we got? That's Quita. Oh, hi, Quita. You, really, you guys are really appreciated here. Thank you. Oh, Thank say it you. again. I'm sorry. I messed with you. <laughs> <laughs> For Bronx Country, really, really this is Raquel Gonzalez. If you can't make it to every game, but still want to find a way to support the Bronx, donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAP for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student-athlete scholarships, so visit broncathleticfund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student-athletes. One way you can donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund is by participating in our 8th Annual Bay Fishing Tournament, affectionately known as BAIT, on South Padre Island on April 12th. You can be one of eight teams to win over $10,000 in cash prizes, including a $4,000 grand prize. There's also a raffle to win a $35,000 boat. Interest peaked? Visit utpabronx.com slash bait for more information. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. The basketball teams have a few days off for finals, but both teams head to TCU on Sunday for a doubleheader. The men play at one and the women play at four. The men stay in the area to face SMU, while the women come home to host UT Arlington on Wednesday. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Go Bronx! Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. 
Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. 